In this video, I'll be showing you how to install Android in VirtualBox. Now, I know I've already made a video covering how to do that in VMware. However, in that video, my method was downloading a pre-made Android image and importing that into VMware. And that method is kind of outdated now. Like, that video is like five years old already. In this video, I'll be showing a more up-to-date and widely used method that involves actually installing Android in VirtualBox. And by the way, you can do this in any hypervisor, but I'm going to be using VirtualBox in this video. But with that said, let's get right into it. So the first step is going to be to download Android x86 by going to android-x86.org, link in the description, and then clicking this download button. And then one of these download buttons, which will take you to the mirror site where you can actually download Android x86. And then you're going to want to get the Android x86 64-bit ISO file. So download that. Now I've already got this file downloaded. So once you have that file, you're going to open up your either VirtualBox or your hypervisor of choice. I'm using VirtualBox in this video. And then you're going to create a new VM. And then I'm going to name this one Android. And then select your Android x86 ISO. You may need to click on Other and browse for it manually. Then hit Next. When it comes to the RAM, I would allocate at least 2, gig two gigs of RAM. I'm actually going to up it to 4 gigs in this video. And give it at least two CPUs if possible. I'd recommend not doing more than half of your host system CPU count to avoid crashing your host system. But if you only allocate one CPU to your Android virtual machine, then you'll find that some apps like Google Chrome will crash when you when you try to open them. And then you're going to create a virtual hard disk. 25 gigabytes is fine for my purposes, but you can always allocate more if you need it. And then just check everything and then hit finish. Now, before we can start this up, what we have to do is go to our virtual machine settings and first of all, change the type to Linux. That should already be set to Linux, but if it's not, change it to Linux from this dropdown and then change the version to Linux 2.6 slash 3x slash 4x slash 5x 64 bit. Now go to the system settings and make sure pointing device is set to USB tablet. And another optional change you can do to improve performance is change the chipset from PIX3 to ICH9, just to have a more modern chipset so that it won't lag as much. And then go to your display settings and then drag your virtual machine's video memory all the way up. And then the most important part here is change your graphics controller to VBOX VGA. And then it's gonna complain that you have invalid settings, just ignore that. And don't enable 3D acceleration. And the reason is, is that in particular in newer versions of VirtualBox, this actually requires that you have VirtualBox guest editions installed in your Android virtual machine, which if there is a way to do that, I couldn't figure it out. out or find any information on how to do it. If you figured out a way, please leave it in the comments below. Oh, and similarly, your graphics controller has to be set to VBOX VGA. Otherwise, 
it won't work. As in, after you install Android x86, you won't even be able to launch into the Android interface. And then go to storage and then check that your Android x86 ISO is connected. Then come down to your network and make sure that your network adapter is attached to NAT. And then once you've verified your settings, hit OK. And then you can double check that you've got the right settings here. Then click Start, which will start the Android x86 installation process. And then we're going to use the up and down arrow keys to go down to Installation, and then select Installation by hitting Enter, which will allow us to install Android x86 to our virtual hard disk. Now again, we have to use our arrow keys and the to go up and down, and then enter to select. You're going to hit the down arrow key to highlight create slash modify partitions, then hit enter, and do not use GPT. And then you're going to go to new and create a primary partition that fills up the entire free space on this virtual hard disk which is done by default. Then you're going to flag it as bootable by hitting the enter key. And you see that under flags, it should now say boot. And then you're going to use the right arrow key to navigate over to write in order to write the partition table. Then just type out yes. You might not be able to see the whole thing, but then hit enter. And now it will write your partition table to the disk. Now you use the right arrow key to navigate over to quit. And then hit quit to quit out of this. And then you'll get back to the installer in the choose partition screen. And as you can see, our new partition is already highlighted. You're going to hit enter. And then you're going to format this as ext4 and then hit yes to format our new partition as ext4. And then when it asks, do you want to install the bootloader grub? Hit yes to that. And whether you install the slash system directory as read write is up to you. For my purposes, I'm going to hit no, because then that'll make the installation take longer. But now it's going to install Android x86 in your virtual machine. And that actually doesn't take long at all. Now you can reboot. And if it boots back into the installation CD, just eject the CD from your virtual machine, and then reset your virtual machine. And now it'll boot you into the Android x86 boot menu and then you just boot into Android x86. And if you do nothing on that menu, it'll just automatically select that option anyway. And then assuming that you've set up everything correctly, you should see this nice Android boot screen. And then it should bring you to the initial setup screen. I'm going to select English as my language. And now where it says connect to Wi-Fi, what, you, what you're going to have to do to get this virtual machine connected to the internet is go to see all Wi-Fi networks. And now it should show you a network called Vert Wi-Fi. If, I, if you don't see this, check your virtual machine's network settings. But now you're going to select this Vert Wi-Fi network, and then your virtual machine will connect and then start checking for updates. And now it's going to give you the option to transfer data from another Android device. Since this is a virtual machine, you're probably not going to want to do that. And then it's going to offer you the option to sign into a Google account, which you'll have to do if you want to download apps from the Google Play Store. But for the purposes of this video, I'm actually going to not sign into my Google account. So I'm going to click skip. And yep, that is the current time and my time zone should detect that automatically.
then you can set your privacy preferences here. Like you might not want it to use your location. And I would turn off send diagnostic data. Then once you're done with that, just click accept. And then you can choose to set a pin or a password on your VM. I'm not sure why they have lock patterns because that is not secure. If you use it on your phone, switch to something else, honestly. But since this is a virtual machine that is at least in theory protected by your host system's login, and it, and it probably doesn't even have much stuff on it anyway, you can get away without setting a password. Android x86 actually comes with two home screen applications. The most common one is Quick Step. So then you just select whichever one you want and then click always to always use that as your home screen. And now we're in Android. And essentially how this works is that your mouse is kind of like your finger on the touch screen. So you kind of just, for example, to get into the control center or whatever this is called on Android, just click and drag. Same thing when swiping it up. Like basically think of a click as equivalent to you touching the screen. If you've ever used Windows 8 before, then you'll know what I mean. But now if we swipe up, which means press and hold, click, and drag the mouse up, then we could see our apps that we have installed. And as you can see, this comes with dev tools because it, Android in a virtual machine is used a lot in developing Android apps. And you can also, of course, get apps from the Google Play Store, assuming that you sign into a Google account. Yeah, the phone app doesn't work because this is a virtual machine, but it also comes with a terminal emulator, so you can run Unix commands in your virtual machine, and yes, allow it to access files on your device. So there's actually quite a bit you could do with this. Like, this is mostly used by developers, but even if you're just a casual user, you can also use it to kind of get familiar with Android if you don't have an Android phone. This is actually especially helpful for if you want to get into IT, because Android is something that you really need to be familiar with, because people are probably going to be asking you for help with their Android phones and tablets. So if you don't have an Android phone or tablet, this is actually a great way to get familiar with the operating system. And by the way, this is Android version 9. So it's not the latest version, but I'm sure it will get updates in the future. And by the way, if you wanted to power this off or restart it, just go to the input tab on the VirtualBox window, then click insert control alt delete. If you're using a different hypervisor, then the exact procedure to access this will of course be a little bit different, but then you get uh, options to power off, restart, sleep, or take a screenshot. I will go power this off for now. By the way, I have also tested this in Kimu slash KVM, and if you want to do that, then you don't need to configure any settings with your virtual machine before installing Android x86, you can just start the installation process right away. I've not tested this in VMware, so your mileage may vary with that. But that's it for this video. Be sure to give it a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.